let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, I feel like I waited a long time for this, but it's finally time for me to plant my spring bulbs. The planting plan is nearly done. And that's always something that I want to tackle first, just really know what I want to plant where. Otherwise it just, you know, things don't happen. I think mostly today I'm going to tackle containers. I actually want to fill up this massive tin bass planter that we used to have at the front of the house in our previous garden. I've emptied it of all plants for transport. Let's start with that. Right now I've set up the bass just at the edge of our little patio so that we could see it when we use the sofa. Also I moved some containers so that we have a little bit of a display. I actually really like what it looks like right now. So I might pop some tulips here or there and add a few more things but essentially I think it's going to look like this. The main event being the teen bass and then a collection of containers to accompany the planting. Look how beautiful Schemias look right now. And so I saved all the compost that was in there previously so we're going to reuse it. Last year I used a bulb starter fertilizer and I feel like that really helped my bulbs give their best. It's not mandatory, but because I had good luck with it last year, it's a small thing that I can do to help my bulbs grow. So I think we're just going to sprinkle a thin layer of that on top of the soil and then plant. I was really inspired by our trip to the Kukunov, a beautiful spring park in the Netherlands earlier this spring, and they add bulb meadows. So really just a beautiful mix of a lot of colors. One of my favorites display was in beautiful shades of pink. So this is what inspired me to create this, this planting. So I just bought, you know, different bulbs and we'll plant them together. We'll start with this beautiful pole share tulips. They have a beautiful dark hue. So all I'm going to do is basically open them up and then sprinkle them across their surface. And all you have to do is just nestle it on the compost and wait for it to grow. Next, we're adding Queen of Night. So I think I'll try to work from one end to the other so that I remember roughly what's what. Oh, can just brush them off, they will go. If also if your tulips already started growing, so if they have a little bit of a shoot that is appearing and it's planting time, that's fine. Just plant them in, they'll be fine. Just be extra careful not to damage that tip because otherwise you won't get any blooms. Next I have Salmon Impression, a beautiful tulip. And those, I mean, those bulbs are massive. I don't know if you can see, if you compare the size of these two the bulbs are massive. So those are going to be an absolute glory of a bloom. Next on my list are beautiful Lasting Love. I love that red color. I grew them a few years ago. They were just absolutely striking from bud to fully formed flower. Next, Slawa. That actually were sent to me by Thompson & Morgan. So thank you so much for sending these out. I can't wait to try them. I always get a lot of questions about how should I space my tulips. It really depends on how many years basically you expect them to perform in your garden. Well, for starters, tulips are the best in their first season. That's why I replant every year. I design a new show every year because otherwise you don't get the same, the same amount of blooms. Of course, there are some varieties that naturalize better than others, but really, if you want the best bloom display, just start fresh. As soon as you plant your tulips, it flowers the first year and then it goes into a division process. That is one bulb becomes many and this is why also you see me removing those small offsets a lot. And that's a, an absolutely normal process. Your bulb just divides and creates some bulblets. What happens though is that year on year, if those bulblets don't have time to grow or you know, be of a certain size, they won't, they won't bloom. And this is why the density of blooms over time tends to fade. But also as the bulb divides, it of course needs more room. So this is why you often see the planting advice. I've seen spacing in between each bulb for tulips as wide as 10, 15 centimeters. And this is purely because one bulb becomes many 
And if you don't leave them that space and you want them to come year after year, they'll be overcrowded and then again, they won't perform. Plant with a lower density. Just space your bulbs a little bit more so that they have room to divide and then year on year at least, they have a better chance of giving you a best show. If like me, you want the most dense blooms and you want a really gorgeous show, I would just plant them as close as possible, so long as they're not touching. But if you're planting in small containers, then I would definitely recommend every two years to planting things in the, in the landscape. This is Dolls Minuet, another absolute gorgeous showstopper. I also added Miss Elegance to that mix and this is what it looks like. They're close together. I think I could have fit a little bit more bulbs there, but that's already going to be a glorious show. Yesterday I ended up adding some bark on top of the compost to finish off the look, but also to give an extra layer of protection. And then the frost arrived. Weeks or at least days of a really hard frost below minus 5 degrees Celsius, which was of course absolutely beautiful to see everything frosted, but also made everything more complicated. In our previous garden, we hardly ever got frost and if any, it was just a very light one and that wouldn't last so long. This was during the Arctic snap in the UK in December, in mid-December 2022, where we just had incredibly low temperatures for really long. So I had essentially 48 hours of pre-warning before that cold snap hit us and I had to get everything in the ground. And that's going to be episode two of our garden makeover. Stay tuned, that's probably going to be next week's video where I share with you the emergency planting we had to do to save the plants. That also creates a huge challenge to plant spring balls because I still had to finish before we went away for Christmas and I had to deal with frozen compost. So all those pots were emptied of their old compost that I used over here as mulch. We'll, we'll reveal that later. So everything is all empty, lined up and ready to be filled with fresh compost. I am keeping the pots next to the foundations of the house because I think it will protect them better from frost. <laughs> Sima. Sima is listening, can you see him? Also it's an area that gets sun every morning so at least it can unfreeze as opposed to the areas that, stays, that stay in the shade all day. Actually, you know like, Right here, for example, this hasn't defrosted all day. I'm just going to fill them up with compost. I got some new compost that I left in the garage. So fingers crossed, it's not completely frozen and can be used. And then we'll plant the bulbs. <sighs> Let's go, it's very cold. Oh my gosh, that is so heavy, you see? I thought the compost might be frozen, so I just poured some boiling water on top of it. I think it's okay. I think we're going to be able to plant. Actually, I think pouring the boiling water helped because like there's a side, like the side where the water was poured, everything just comes apart and is really fluffy. And everything at the back and on the sides, you can see just, just like lumps out in bigger lumps. So, oh yeah, and here I can see it's definitely frozen. So, that's frozen even in the garage. Right now, pretty easy. I'm just following my planting plan. Over here, we're going to have Purissima, spring green, beautiful white prints, and here are some Ice King daffodils. So, I try to choose a container that will, of course, offset or match the bloom. So I was thinking here, darker tone container will be really lovely with some whites. I also just snipped indoors to prepare some labels. So I remember exactly what variety is in what, because of course this is not how the pots will be. I'm just trying to store them for winter that way. 
What I really love about planting in containers is that it's really fast because you put the amount of compost that you need so that you have space for the roots underneath the bulb. Plant your tulips or any other bulbs and then add more soil. And then typically you want your bulb to be planted two to three times its depth in height. So for example, tulips, you want to plant them about 15 centimeters deep. That's a great rule of thumb for anything that you plant. Let's talk bulb lasagna. So that is simply layering your bulbs on a small footprint so that can be a container but also in the ground so that you get more blooms in the same footprint. I'm going to repeat that this year with a beautiful pairing Tulipa Queensland that grows about 20 centimeters tall and is a beautiful double tulip with fringed edges. It is so showy. And also a miscarry in a beautiful pale blue hue called Valerie Finis. And I actually found that layering bulbs for me worked better with smaller bulbs. So pairing a bigger bulb like a tulip or a daffodil with a smaller bulb like a miscarry, like crocus, simply because they, those smaller bulbs need to be buried less deep. So that also works better, especially if you have shallow bowls like me. Otherwise, if you wanted to layer tulips together or daffodils together or the tulips and daffodils, you know what I mean, I would pick something that is at least 40 centimeters deep like this so that you have plenty of room to make your layers. That's a bummer, but actually two out of the 15 tulip bulbs ended up not being viable for planting. They, they, they just don't look good. So I ended up merging everything in one bowl. So that's going to be really beautiful and showy. So I just need to top up, well, actually, let's top up with the compost from here. Maybe in the other one, I'll put some crocuses. I think that could be really pretty. Last year, I grew a bunch of bulbs also in the garden. It was beautiful. If you want to see it, I'll leave a playlist with all the beautiful garden tours. It was really great. And so I decided to lift and store some of the bulbs to reuse the following years. So this daffodil mino I grew last year, actually in these exact same containers, they look like frost might have gotten to them. So let's see, let's see. I'll plant them alongside with some Miscari Latifolium, a beautiful bicolored bloom. So I think that pairing will be lovely. Those are pieces that I used last year. They're just chicken wire. Put that on top and make sure I press down the sides so that can't be lifted. In the spring, as soon as the bulbs are going to grow, remove the wire because otherwise they can damage the foliage and the bud. So last year, I think I removed that around early March. Okay. okay, this is day two of planting in a mini ice age. Can you see that? It is Sunday. It is the middle of the day and it is zero degrees. Let's check on what we planted yesterday. I covered them with some fleece, I hope. I just hope they made it through the night. Here they are. I mean, if it looks like it, it did stop some of the frost. Let's see. I was looking. We all snugging. Yeah, it looks, it looks good. It looks pretty good. Did a little bit of prodding and the soil is not frozen or at least it had time to thaw because it's now zero degrees. But I think I think that fleece really helps. We still have a bunch of containers to plant. First, I think we need to defrost some compost. <laughs> Let's do this. Look at that brick. Like, this is what, this was taking forever. Here I popped Tahiti, brownie, white valley, and some leftover of my orange lion and, and vinite mix. Then here we have my favorite mix from last year, which is orange lion and vinite in those two containers. And then some leftovers over here. 
Then this is Elegant Lady. Then this is a mix of Fancy Frills and Greenland. Fancy Frills will bloom first and then Greenland. I didn't layer them though, they're just on the same level. So we'll see how that goes. And here, more cheerfulness. Now for the little shelf moment. Every year I love adding some smaller containers and have a color scheme and just enjoy some early blooms. Of course, using vertical spacing is great for small spaces. And this year we're back with another design. This year I'm going back to blues because I think for early spring they matched, you know, the cooler temperatures, but I'm also peppering some beautiful yellows. So I'm going to use some beautiful bulbs that were kindly sent to me by Taylor Bulb. So thanks again for that. Two varieties of Narcissus that I've never tried before. One called Canaliculatus, really beautiful, small scented cluster blooms, my favorite type and also some arctic bells that have a really unique shape. Those are going to be lovely. I'm also going to pair that up with some muscari, some arises, because they bloom really early, so that's going to be great interest. I also got a mix of hyacinths, again, still in this blue, uh, blue hues. And then I have two specialty hyacinths, Woodstock and Gypsy Queen. Of course, with metal, you can use whatever color you want. Black also is very versatile. So let's, let's play around with this. I think in this white planter, I'm going to pop the Arctic bells because we have a little bit more height here. Oh, oh, the bulbs are super small. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but these bulbs are really small. This is what I got at my local hardware store to protect the bulb. It's basically a protection fleece cover and this one is rated for heavy duty. So very frosty and very windy conditions. Here we go, everything we planted today, all huddled. Hopefully that will take the edge off and they can survive. And also our other little grouping here. Hopefully near the foundation of the house, this is going to be enough to stop the most of the frosts. Look, he's sleeping here. Simba, hello. Hi, say hi. 